Welcome, everyone. This is the Should I Start podcast. This is a podcast where we talk about innovators, creatives, and business owners for global listeners. The show is about the creative process that many artists, business, men, and women employ when creating their works. You'll hear from musicians, producers, poets, photographers, innovators, business owners, and more. Please subscribe to our season and enjoy. Welcome to the Should I Start podcast, where we talk about business creativity innovation of the not even local the international creatives that i come across in miami yay it's, a, <laughs> it's an international city yeah it's an international city with international individuals as well as innovators and i have the pleasure of meeting one of my friends hey man it's my pleasure <laughs> to have you here i have the wonderful jpeg with me aka juan philippe damn son that was good <laughs> that's an intro well, my name is Juan Felipe. Uh, I was born in Colombia. Um, people may know me at, on Instagram as JPEG, J-A-Y-P-E-G-G, -G, which is a play on words, if you get it. Okay. Good for you. So we can assume that you're a photographer. I do pictures, yeah. I like to take pictures. I've been, I've been swimming in the video, video world uh, lately, but yeah, my main focus is uh, images right now. Nice. When did you start? Um, I started taking pictures like six years ago, five years ago. I was living in New York at the time. I was going to drama school in New York. I wanted to be an actor. And then uh, I just got into the Instagram bug and started taking pictures with my phone and just playing with the little uh, editing apps, uh, Light, uh, not Lightroom, Afterlight and stuff like that. And I really got into it and then people like, Friends and family started acknowledging my pictures, like actually sending me direct messages. Hey, that's really nice. I love it, blah, blah, blah. And I was really enjoying just walking around the city and snapping pictures. And, and then like a year went by of just doing that. And my brother, who lived in Miami at the time, he had a, a Mark II, a Mark, yeah, 5D Mark II, just laying in his house. And then he came to my graduation in New York and I was like, bro, can you just leave the camera for like a couple of weeks? Because I was going back to Miami anyway. And I never looked back. Yeah, I got, I got addicted to taking pictures. And then because a friend of mine saw a picture, she wanted me to cover an event for her. And then we kind of started from there. Nice. So when you went to acting school, was it theater? Was it television? What, did you, what was your strength or what, so you, what did you focus on? I went to a school called uh, the New York Conservatory for the Dramatic Arts, NYCDA. It's in Chelsea. Uh, it's a private, small drama school. All the training is theater-based. It's a Meisner school. Uh, Meisner is an uh, acting technique. But it's, the training is guided it's a theater trained program, but for film and television. So everything that an actor goes through to get prepared for a role, uh, rehearsals, is very theater based. But then when you apply it, um, it's for TV and film. So we did a little bit of both. So that's how you feel like you do photography. And then I'm also, you know, in the realm of videos and filming yeah, too, no. because it's just like, I was in the environment where it's like they taught us this specific thing, but I can use it for other areas, other creative fields. Totally, totally, yeah. totally, totally. And just like with acting, you get to really work with people one on one. You're talking to people and creating things. So that really taught me to actually talk with if I'm shooting a model, just be a person with that model before I actually start shooting just to make everything comfortable. That really helps me. And, and acting just taught me how to work with people, work with a team, because, I mean, in acting, there's directors, producers, PAs, actors, light guy. You know, it's a, it's a whole team that you need to be working with in order to produce this one thing. And it's the same thing with photograph. It's basically, I, I, I jump from in front of the camera to back of the camera, yeah. which I kind of like more now. <laughs> But don't give up. Never. <laughs> don't Never. give up on we'll that. see. Maybe, maybe I'll do something. Yeah, you short yeah. films coming soon. <laughs> yeah. <I> see it. <laughs> if you look me up as Juan Felipe and my last name, R-A-N-G-E-L, there's like some soaps that I did here in Miami before I went to New York, which is why I made the decision to go to New York. Because I was actually, I was getting work here in Miami as an actor doing like the Telemundo soaps and like TV commercials. 
and then my family is like, you need to like go to New York and try the big leagues and stuff like that. But then this whole photography thing just took over my life, and and also I started getting actual work. We kind of really pushed me to pursue it and take it more seriously, make a business, get an LLC, all that kind of stuff. Now, what were your first photos that you took? My first. And what camera did you use? My first photos, like ever, or like on this New York period that you can remember. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> My dad used to take a lot of pictures back in Colombia, uh -huh. like a lot, so you, all the time. Okay. He had a, a point-and-shoot film, one of those automatic film cameras, they, but they're film. Um, you know, like those Pentax that I call the hipster cameras today, people like to use. My dad had one all the time. So, so he was I kind of like used it from time to time and take pictures myself, but I never was like in love with taking images until later in my life. Uh, I always go back to that bubble picture. I, I took a picture at uh, Washington Square Park in New York. That was what I did was basically ride my bike around the city, stop here and there with my bag and my camera and just walked around neighborhoods and then bike to other neighborhoods and do the same. And then I took one picture one time at Washington Square Park. Uh, I'm sure if you've been to New York, you've seen those guys put a bucket on the middle of the park and start doing those huge bubbles. And I grabbed one with the guy and a little blonde girl. And it's just a memorable, memorable picture for me. I will never forget it. And every time somebody sees it, it's like, oh my God, that picture. So really, I, I, I love it. The only sad thing about the picture is that um, uh, lesson time, guys. Back up your stuff. After I moved back f uh, from New York to Miami, dropped the hard drive, lost every single picture that I ever took in New York, which was my like, first three years of actual images like raw files. So that sucks. So I only have like two prints. Um, did you start shooting in raw when you first got a camera or were you shooting in JPEG? JPEG, bro. <laughs> you got to learn every single thing. Of course, I started doing JPEG and I edited the pictures on iPhoto, is it called? The, like the standard the basic, software. Yeah, the basic the, software for Apple. Did you have an Apple when you first edited your photos? Yeah, did I did. I did. But I didn't know about Lightroom at all. So mm -hmm. I did iPhoto and whatever like things I could do over there. And you're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> and then I did my first like actual, I, I, I knew a girl who wanted to be a model. So we um, teamed up and my, I did my first shoot. And she was the one who told me about Lightroom because her boyfriend at the time uh, was a f another photographer. And he, oh, my boyfriend uses Lightroom. I'm like, what is that? Oh, this other Adobe looks like, cool. You should use it. You should give it a try. And that's how I learned about Lightroom. Then I bought it, started practicing and whatnot. I had an idea because I, I used those apps that I told you, um, Afterlight and, and Vis uh, Visco, all that kind of stuff. So you, you kind of get the hang of it once you get into Lightroom. Of course, Lightroom is a little bit more complex, but I, uh, it wasn't that new to me, which I loved. But then that, that's how I began. And then trial and error, like taking pictures, taking pictures, taking pictures, taking pictures, taking pictures and <laughs> playing and playing, 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 playing. So, you said that your father was the first person in your life that took photos. Uh huh. Did you ever see his old work? Well, he didn't take pictures for as a profession. He no, just no, he's just like fun. yeah, he just yeah, like for, taking did, pictures. Did you ever like yo, dad? This is awesome. Yeah. Well, my dad my dad worked in television in Colombia. He was a uh, a production manager. Whoa. So, so you've so, always been in the creative. Right. Field. I think that's why I I'm really I, I've always been inclined into the arts and entertainment and television because my dad used to work in that field back in Colombia and he got to he got to a really good place so you know I was six years old working in sets all the time and meeting actors so I was really like oh my god I want to do that I love that and back in Colombia I did a couple commercials I was in like a, a musical theater group so I was always involved but um yeah and my dad my dad my dad's world kind of fueled my my creativity for sure Creative ambition. Mm -hmm. Are you now a business? I am a business. You are a business. All right. Cool. It's hard. <laughs> Is it Learning hard? every day. How, many, how long have you been in business for? Um, actual business for like two years. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And then how long have you been doing it as a hobby? For like six. Six. Six, five years. Okay. So what would you tell your younger self if you wanted to start a business in photography? Um... 
it, it's it's a tough thing but if you i mean what i will tell myself is that you need to try it first see how it goes and then actually make a decision because there's a lot of investment there that you need to do and and just responsibility basically but um if I, just in any field as an entrepreneur i guess you have to really know that you want to do that and then actually follow up and put it on the table nice now i bet that there is one funny moment you've had doing photography there's, there's a few <laughs> there's a few moments what's one of your most memorable positive moments in photography that you like can you know give us if you can i'm just saying <laughs> but the, <laughs> What do you mean f funny like as fun, in... Fun as in like you're happy, like you got the shot or like that day was whole, like memorable because when you shoot with film, you have like 30, like let's say like moments that you can capture throughout right. the day. But the story behind those moments, it's what's really like... Well, that bubble story is a really memorable one for me and I, and I have like a soft spot in my heart for New York. So it's this like nostalgic thing. But I think funny and fun for me, uh, in this period of shooting in New York, uh, I was really, I'm, I've been always like inclined to like fashion. I'm not a fashion guy. I don't know. I'm not fashion. Like, no, I don't know anything about yeah, fashion. Yeah, style people. Don't listen but to me. But I appreciate, <laughs> I, I, like when I see somebody walking on the street, like really nice, really well dressed or flamboyant. I don't know. It really gets my attention. I love it. I love seeing somebody like nice, nicely dressed. I don't know why. So I, I started a street style blog in, in New York called Where the Street because I was always shooting people and kind of like I, I, I learned how to stop people on the street. Hey, can I take a picture without being, you know, weird or anything, which was a self-taught kind of thing. Some people can't really shoot on the streets. They're shy. I kind of forced myself to do that. And then I started going to Fashion Week on my own, just standing outside the venues. And that, because of doing that, I've gotten the opportunity to actually work, like for example, here in Miami, in Miami Fashion Week, Swim Week, because they've seen that work that I've done, that I put myself out there. I actually paid out of my own pocket to fly back to New York and be in New York Fashion Week. I didn't go to any show, I didn't have any tickets, but I stood out, I stood outside every single show, took some nice pictures, met really wonderful people. And I think that's fun, I mean, I've always been, I've never had a teacher in photography or I never went to school for photography, so I never had the pressure, kind of like in acting school, you know, they tell you, you gotta do this, you gotta be like that, you gotta always learn, you know, it's a lot of pressure. With photography, I've always did it on my own, pushing myself hard and, and, and it's kind of worked out so far. So yeah, that was fun, shooting Fashion Week. Definitely recommend it. <laughs> Definitely buy your tickets, invest your money, do it now, and then you can do Fashion Week anywhere. Yeah. Because you can show the work. And then Vogue will fly you to Paris, London, Milan, all that kind of stuff. Nice. So now you are messing around in the filming area, yeah. like video, video filming. Yeah. We have to be very clear about it because filming can be like old school hipster cameras. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> and now it's like video. Moving images. <laughs> So what gave you the inspiration to want to tackle this part of the creative field? Clients want video, period. And I, I didn't want to, some people don't actually jump and try to do video. I, I, you know when you see something that you're like, I know I can do it, I just, I don't know how to get there. Like that's how video has been, for me so far, like um, I feel like I know what I want to convey in a, in a video, but the technicalities of using Premiere and camera settings, that's all the stuff that I've been learning slowly to actually make it a good looking video from what I know. So I just started doing videos on my own. Hey, call a friend, he skateboards, hey, let's do a quick clip so I can practice. And boom, 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 boom. And then somebody sees a video that I put on my Instagram for fun. Oh, I love what you did. Can you do that for me? And that's how it's been working out so far. I'm still learning though, and it's have a long, long way to go. <laughs> but but just I I I, th I always tell people just jump, take the take the chance. Kind of like what I did with New York. 
you know, go to Fashion Week. I mean, do it. You've always been a daredevil. <laughs> I'm a daredevil. No, no. It's, it's more about actually doing it instead of talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, you've expressed to me already that, you know, ambition, go out there, do it. Now, it's like social media has helped you. How do you feel that social media has empowered you? And what platform do you think empowers you the most? Instagram. Do it. Instagram, bro. <laughs> it's my my portfolio. I'm, I'm not even joking. Um, people ask me for my website. I have a website. I'm, I'm not really happy with it. Which is a really good website. It's Thank very you for clean, saying that. Very clean, very Thank efficient. Thank you. It has a lot of work to be done because I spend most of my time on Instagram. I get a lot of clients from Instagram, a lot of inquiries. So I really push uh, the IG pretty much 100%. So whenever people ask me, hey, where can I see your group, uh, your work? IG, IG. I really honestly never sent anybody to my website. I have it, but <laughs> IG, bro, IG. Yeah, that's the future. I'm thinking about changing my website into my YouTube page. I'm just like, this is my website, but it links you to my Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it gives, you, it gives you legitimacy, you know? A website, you, you must have one. But like to be quite honest, I don't really put a lot of attention or, or I have my things and but Instagram is my main I guess go uh, to. yeah for sure main for sure go to. awesome and I'm glad it's at J-A-Y-P-E-G-G -G underscore that's the end <laughs> <laughs>